Good evening, everyone. Today, we're going to be going over USB Loader GX on the Wii. Hey, guys, before we start the video, just wanted to give a big thank you. We're at 1,000 subscribers. We made it to monetization. Let's go. 98% of you are not subscribed, however, so if you watch a few of my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like the content I make. So, that's going to do it, and let's get right on into USB Loader. If you want to play Wii games on your Wii through ROMs, if you want to back them up, play Wii ROMs, GameCube ROMs too, but GameCube ROMs are a little bit easier to play in the Wii, um, you're going to need a USB flash drive for the Wii. Because you can play GameCube off the SD card, but for some reason you can't play Wii off the SD card. I don't know. You need a USB drive. And you need a good USB drive. There are certain USB drives that just do not work, however many times I've tried them. This one that I'm using is a Kingston Data Traveler 32 gig um, USB 3.0 drive. Um, Lexar works. Uh, Kingston works. Just... Buy a trusted storage company. I don't know if Seagate makes USB drives, um, but, you know, buy a trusted company. You know, Sabrent, Kingston, Lexar, SanDisk. I, I don't know if San... Does SanDisk make USB drives? I don't know. But buy a trusted USB drive, and it should work. It needs to be 32 gigs. Or, actually, it needs to be something that you can f format to FAT32. I go with a 32 gig drive because it's exactly fat 32 um or it's the you know the maximum amount of storage that is fat 32 so and i actually got this usb drive for free with my 3ds capture card the guy gave me a freaking 32 gig for just like the drivers and stuff it's like oh i'll take it you know so anyways let's get into the video and we are going to go over to we're going to go over to we dot guide so this is kind of your custom firmware-ish guide. Again, I'll leave a link to this in the description. And you're going to need D2X uh, CIOS installer. But first, let's take a look at the our Wii SD card, because you're going to need a homebrewed Wii. I'm not going to do a tutorial on uh, homebrew Wii. There's a million out there. Just homebrew your Wii and get it set up with homebrew. My SD card. Pop it in, and we'll see what's in here. Um, I'm making this guide because it's super, it's super, super, super complicated. So this is what's in my SD card. Just get it set up like this. We have a bunch of bin files, USB loader, CFG, um, .dol, boot.dol for GameCube stuff, and then startup.elf. I'm not sure what that is, but it's something that happens in the homebrew process, I assume. And then these are the folders you're, gonna, you're going to want to have, um, except for VBAGX. This is another app that I have that's for some reason separate from my apps folder. But... Really, it's just the apps folder. These are all the homebrew apps you're going to want to have. And as you see right here is the D2X CIOS installer, which if you merge the apps folder from this link right here, this gives you a 7-zip with an apps folder. If you just merge it with the apps folder in your USB drive, or sorry, if you just merge it with your SD card, you will have D2X CIOS installer. And then you're going to need USB loader GX which I don't have a link, I will leave one in the description when I find one, but you're going to need the USB loader GX uh, folder app, whatever, which I will leave a link to the description when I find one, and you're going to need the, the WAD for it too, the .wad, which I will leave another link to in the description, Google notifications, I should probably turn those off when I'm making a video. Okay, so, once you have that all set up, um, we're going to go into the Wii, and we're going to do a few things. So, I am putting in the SD card wrong. Okay, just turned on the Wii, and we should, after we do this and move this up here, have our Wii set up, kind of. So, inside of the Wii... We are going to go to, again, I already have USB loader set up, so I'm trying to do this kind of backwards. So we're going to go to the homebrew channel. 
and we're going to start that up. You should have the homebrew channel um, if you have homebrewed your Wii. And we are going to go to D2X CIOS installer. Again, I already have this set up, so I'm not really going to install anything. But um, you're going to want to do set this, set the top one. Again, there's a little arrow to the left. Um, you can see me scrolling through these, so again, go to the top one, select V10 Beta 52, D2X V10 Beta 52, select 56, 249, and 65,535, and install that. Hit A twice, and it will install, and show you a little debugger, and it'll install, um, pretty easily. Next one you're going to want to do after that's done, you're going to go V10 beta 52 D2X V10 beta 52 57 to 50 and 65,535. Go through the installation process again and come back to here and the last one you're going to do is 58 to 51 and 65,535. Hit install, go through the installation process again and you will have the custom firmware installed. And so that completes that process so here's where we need to get serious so i'm going to shut this off because i don't know what i keep doing oh god the elgato just does not like it when stuff gets shut off so we're going to put in our our usb drive and this is so important and stupid. I hate this, but it's nobody explains it. Nobody explains how to do this, and it's really annoying, so I had to figure it out by myself. So here we go. So here we are in our USB drive, and you see three folders. One is WBFS, right? So we have WBFS. This is our Wii games. We have games. These are our GameCube games. And we have the saves folder. This is for we if we um, activate... Uh, GameCube save emulation, but oh, I have one of these, so I don't necessarily need that, but if you do, I'll show you how to do it anyways, but I'm not going to. So, in your games folder, this is going to be your GameCube games. So, I'm going to go to my, actually, I don't have the SD card in right now, but basically, this is what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to set it up so that in the games folder, which is your GameCube stuff, you're going to put in a game. So let's say Super Mario Sunshine, right? Let's say you had Super Mario Sunshine. I don't. Space, bracket, game ID. You need the game ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to um, Super Mario... What is it doing? I don't know. Super Mario Sunshine Game ID. And we should go to Game TDB. This is a kind of an archive for all of your games, and we're going to copy the game code. I don't know why there's so many people walking around in my house. And we're going to rename this. Put the game code in the brackets, and there we go. So we have Super Mario Sunshine, space, brackets, game code. Needs to be exactly like that. Don't know why, but people say it doesn't matter, but it does. For some reason, it does. And then in here, okay, there's going to be a lot of cutting in this. In here, in this folder, the Super Mario Sunshine folder, we're going to drop a f we're gonna drop the file, right? We're going to drop the ISO, so... GameCube ROMs are in ISO format, which they should be. The, the let's say, the file, I don't know, but the file needs to be, so I'm just going to rename the folder. Just So this is the folder, and then what I'm going to rename the folder as is, is what's going to be the file's name. So we're going to rename it. The file needs to be game code, no brackets, no brackets whatsoever, the game code dot ISO. That's what it needs to be called. And it needs to be in that folder that we just created that I just renamed to the game code dot ISO. That's what the ISO needs to be called. And so that's how you transfer GameCube stuff. 
and then it the USB will read it just fine. So let's delete this. WBFS needs to be the same thing. I actually have games in here. Um, my game GameCube stuff is on my SD card because I prefer to have it on my SD card, and I'm not gonna switch it around because I don't feel like messing up stuff. So again, this is it's the same format, but but the games need to be in WBFS format. So again, if you use Clean Rip, which I again I don't know how to use, I don't have Clean Rip, but um, you can get the ROMs online. Uh, I, I actually recommend getting the ROMs online. Not going to show you any websites because I am not a piracy person and I don't want to get my video taken down. So we are going to just show you what's going on in here. So again, look at the, look at the file structure. Again, in this USB drive, we have the .wbfs partition. Sorry, WBF, WBFS partition. Inside of here, we have Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, which, I'm, which is important because I'm going to talk about that later. Um, and Pokemon Battle Revolution. So, Pokemon Battle Revolution, space, brackets, RPB, or the game code, sorry, the game code. Inside of this, look, we have the game code, no brackets, no brackets, do not put brackets in the game code, dot .wbfs. So that is in dot .wbfs format. Same thing with Transformers Cybertron Adventures. Again, if there's a colon, you have to put a dash. Uh, or I just replaced it with the dash. I don't really think the name matters that much. I just think that's what's going to come up on the uh, menu. But the space and then the brackets, the game code, that does matter because it's a lot of disk image stuff. And this matters a lot, the ST5E52, the game code with no brackets, .wbfs. That matters a lot because it's going to install a lot of info and it's going to be able to load the game from... Um, USB loader, sorry. Here we go. This is the hard part. Xenoblade Chronicles. Now, when you're ripping a WBFS, if you if you use Clean Rip, usually it'll do this for you. It'll split it up into .wbf1 and a .wbfs, which are two partitions which will run in tandem to get you that um, over 4 gig sized uh, file because again in fat32 you cannot have files that are over four gigabytes so this is where we backup manager comes into importance I have a link to this we backup manager so we're gonna open we backup manager uh, 64 and there we are so here's we backup manager what we're gonna want what we are going to want to do Go over to Drive 1, hit Select, or, hold on, sorry, go over to the drop-down. So we're in the Drive 1 uh, tab, hit the drop-down, hit your USB drive, so I don't think, I do have it in. So my USB drive is the Kingston G, so hit your drive, which is G, or whatever your USB drive is. Then go over to Files, Add, Files, so the Add drop-down. Go over to Files, and this is where you want to put in your ISO, because it'll transfer it to WBFS if it's an ISO. Again, if you're downloading an ISO, We Backup Manager will um, convert it to WBFS. I believe there's options to do that. Um, but drag in your file into this. I don't actually have Xenoblade Chronicles anymore, because it's a 6 gig file, and I deleted it instantly, and I wasn't really thinking about making a video, but then I decided to, because this process is so confusing, so specific, that I just needed to make a video on it, so that people would understand what the hell is going on with this. So again, if you have your 6 gig, um, I would say just convert it first, convert it to WBFS. Um, again, play around with this, see what you can do uh, to convert it to WBFS, I believe it'll automatically do it. But again, just select um, your WBFS folder, and then what you're going to want to do here is select, transfer, so you're go there's going to be a game right here. There's going to be a file, and there's going to be a checkbox right where my uh, pointer is. You're going to select the checkbox, and then you're going to hit transfer and drive 1. And this is going to transfer to drive 1, before you do that, I forgot something. Before you do that, you need to go... Oof. 
you need to go into your WBFS folder and make a folder for the game in this format. This is another thing that's confusing. This whole process is so confusing and people think, oh, it's so simple, I'm not going to explain anything. And then people are just breaking their systems, breaking their drives, they don't know what's going on because nobody explains this stuff. So make a folder before... So let's say we're we're doing Wii Sports. So Wii Sports, make a folder called Wii Sports. Again, this is not over six gigs, but I'm just doing it for the purpose of the video. Wii Sports, and then, you know, we're just going to do a bunch of numbers. Sure, let's say that's the game code, which it's not, but pretend with me here that that's the game code. So make that folder. In here, you're going to have Wii Sports which we don't, but pretend that I have Wii Sports. You're going to hit select, and then transfer, and we're going to transfer it to Drive 1, which we set up here in the Drive 1 tab. And this is going to recognize that, hey, um, can't speak English, that, hey, there's a folder in here, for Wii Sports, and there's the game ID, and this is why the game ID is important. People think, oh, you don't need the game ID in the folder. Yes, you do. This is why it's important, so that Wii Backup Manager can transfer files over 6 gigs. So, you set that up, get the 6 gig file, or, or over 4 gig, whatever the file size is, that's over 4 gigs. Select it, transfer, drive one, and then it'll be about like a 6-7 minute process and your games will be split up into yes into a .wbfs and .wbf1 format now to the Wii part setting up the Wii which is very which is simple it's pretty simple as long as you have that file structure that confuses so we're going to go through this again one more time one more time cuz this is the most confusing part of the thing we have games, saves, dot WBFS. <coughs> WBFS, not dot. In here, we have the GameCube folders with the name, space, game ID in brackets, in square brackets. You have to have that. Then inside of there, you have the game code, no brackets, dot ISO. WBFS, we have the name, space, brackets, game code. In square brackets inside of there game code no brackets dot WBFS or if you have a six gig game dot WBFS and dot WBF1 now let's go over to the Wii place this is this is very important very important I'm not going to <clears throat> I'm gonna edit this in make sure make sure that this USB drive goes in to the USB port closest to the power button. That is the USB port you want to plug into. Right here, the one closest to the edge. That is the USB port you need. Oof. Alright, hold up. I think that's pretty good. So now that you all understand what's going on, we can... I didn't even plug it in yet. Oh my gosh. Alright. Now that that's done, boot up the Wii. And we're gonna see what's going... what's popping in the uh, Wii. No, where's... there it is. Okay. Then we're gonna hit... Per, we're gonna select this. The Elgato is a little bit undersized. It doesn't matter. It's calibrating, whatever. So now we're going to go into the Homebrew channel. Once you have USB Loader GX downloaded, again, put it in... Once you have the USB Loader, put it in the Apps folder. So here we go. Homebrew channel. Start this up. So, again, I have USB Loader GX here, but that's not the newest one. Uh, this is the newest one. I don't know why I have two of them, but it it doesn't matter. And you can load uh, GameCube games from Nintendo, but that is something. You know what? I'll put Nintendo in there. We'll we'll do a little thing of Nintendo. So now you can see all my games again. I have Battle Revolution. Where's my Wii Mote? 
don't know why my Wiimote shut off. Um, again, I have Battle Revolution, Transformers, Xenoblade Chronicles. They show up. If they don't show up, here's what you do. Go here, and then select Wii Games. So this is probably going to be unchecked, or I don't know, but just select it, and then hit OK. Go over to my GameCube stuff. Again, I didn't show you my GameCube SD card, but... Uh, oh, it actually looks like this is a simpler one. So we're going to select G GameCube games, and there we go. There's a bunch of other GameCube games in here. Now we have Coliseum, XD, and I believe this one is the Wind Waker. Um, yeah, it's the Wind Waker. So, that is how you set up USB Loader GX. One more thing, one more thing. Go into settings, go into hard drive settings. Make sure your USB port is zero, because that's the one we plugged it into. That's the one I stressed um, that I said to plug, uh, plug it into the USB thing. And split each 4 gig, so this is, this is what's going to be, um, what reads those partitions that we split up for Xenoblade Chronicles. So, switch this to all partitions, because it, it just makes it simpler. And, uh, I don't think multiple partitions matters. And, Okay. Again, play around with the settings, play around with the GUI settings. Um, the Wiimote, come on, here we go, come on, come on, come on. It's hard with homebrew apps. Um, yeah, I don't think any of this really matters. Um, the loader settings, oh, this is another one. So, you have everything default and off, that's pretty standard. Here we go, loaders iOS. This is what we installed with this... D2XC iOS installation. Make sure these are both 249 and then your games will load. Another thing that I, nobody, this, this USB Loader GX, nobody shows you the features about it. Um, this is just a bunch of sound. Make sure it says sound plus BGM or sound plus quiet. I like sound plus BGM and loop music. Yeah, I don't really care about that, but make sure that's set to that. Parental controls, don't need that. If you're going to play GameCube games from the SD card, this is something you need to do. Custom paths. Go down to... Nope. Okay. Uh, main GameCube path. SD GameCube path. Okay, so here we go. We've got two GameCube paths. We've got a main GameCube path and an SD GameCube path. This is going to give us two paths for... I'm um, selecting GameCube games because I believe I don't know before there was yeah before there was two but I don't, before there was only one but I guess they're giving me both options now so I guess this doesn't matter but again you're going to want to have these set up to your games folder on your USB or your SD card um, for your GameCube games so you can actually have them on both your USB drive and your um, SD cards which is actually very cool I didn't know you could do that Again, I'm not going to have a guide for devolution. Um, if you, I think that's for backups. Again, watch somebody else's guide. This is just for USB loader. Nintendo, we're going to show you how to use Nintendo. This is, you sh this is, there's a homebrew launcher from USB loader. Launch it from your home menu. I don't know why you would want to launch USB, launch homebrew from USB loader. But, uh, again, because we, because uh, there's one thing that uh, makes this not, that you would not want to, um, there's a theme menu update, credits, whatever. There's one thing, and that is that it doesn't show your WiiWare titles, which is really annoying. Again, even if you go here and you select NAND and EmuNAND channels, so if we do this, the, act oh, actually it does, hmm. Okay, the WAD didn't work with that, though. That's interesting. So I guess you can, but it, I'll try it on the USB loader, wad but it didn't work on the wad i'm not going to show you how to download wads you should already know how to do that if you've if you've um, done the custom firmware thing here's another thing if you download new wii games and let, let me get rid of the nand and emu nand channels if you downloaded new wii games it's going to give you this little new thing this blue new box and this blue star will be checked and it'll only show these games. But, like, what if you want to play your games that aren't new? 
it'll automatically have this star checked for some reason, which I don't like. It should not have to do that. But if this happens and you can't see your old games, just uncheck that star. And your games will show back up. So, that's how to use that. Now, Nintendo. Again, just download the app and... Go back to the homebrew channel. Nintendo is for GameCube games if you want to load them in a different way. Don't know why, but hey, I'll show you how to do it. So the Nintendo is a GameCube loader. And let's load this. So again, you have your SD and USB. So let's go to the SD card. And you can see that we have Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon XD, which I have it in a folder called XD Lock Removal. Okay, so what I was saying about this is that for the GameCube games in your SD card, you can kind of be lenient with the file structure. Again, I do have these in, an, in, a, file called, in a folder called Games. And then I have them in a folder called Pokemon Coliseum, which is the name of the game. But I don't have the game ID. And then the file is called Game.ISO. So, for some of these, you can push your luck, and you don't necessarily have to name them. But again, just don't play, don't, just don't, what I would say is just just uh, be safe, name it the game ID.ISO, put it in the folder called Pokemon Coliseum Space, and then the game ID in brackets, and it will 100% work 100% of the time. Again, haven't tested at Wind Waker, but the others have worked just fine. So again, we're, we'll, we'll boot up, um, actually no we won't right now. I'll boot it from a USB loader just to show you that it works in USB loader. But again, you would just select these and it would load the game. And I'm assuming that um, if you went here, yeah, you could go to your USB drive. And again, we're in here. And then you would just um, select whatever was in there. So, let's go back to the home menu. Now we're, we're going to show you... Uh, loading games from the USB loader GX. Or we're, we're going to show you the .wad. So we're going to go to exit to system menu. And we're going to show you the WAD. Because the WAD is the... The WAD is what you're going to want to use. So we're going to go over to USB loader GX. Gonna start that up. So again, I'll leave the link to all of this in the description. So here's all my games. And again, if this stuff happens, just do this. You can go over to GameCube and it'll have your GameCube games loaded. Um there, it just has my Wii loaded. It'll default to having your Wii games here, your GameCube games here, and then I haven't gotten WiiWare to work. It worked on the other one. It worked with uh, motion controls. Be like, it worked with the other one. Again, we only. Oh, it it worked here. Okay, for some reason it wasn't working the other day, but this is how you get WiiWare to work. Um, so just select NAND channels, and uh, there we've got all our WiiWare titles. We've got Rumble. We've got the Mystery Dungeon stuff. We've got Wii Mod Light. Don't know what this is. I don't really want to know what that is, but, uh... Oh, I think that's Backup Homebrew. Um, but yeah, we've got all our WiiWare stuff here. we got Netflix, Everybody Votes channel, stuff like that. Oh, wait, this is the Backup Homebrew. Jeez, I don't know what that one is then. But anyways, yeah, all our stuff is here, so that's how you set up the WiiWare. So again, we've got our WiiWare games. Everything's in the WiiWare section. Go over to GameCube. All our GameCube games are here. And then finally, if I can get the motion controls to work, go over to Wii. And all our Wii games are there. So now, oh, I forgot to tell you this. Go into here, and then we're going to go into... Here we go, here we go, here we go. Memory card emulation. On. So, that is going to be... Um, in the saves file... One thing before I finish, you do not actually need any files, or, yeah, you do not need any files to, uh, play GameCube games, 
with an emulated memory card. All you need to do is turn on that memory card emulation thing and your files will be emulated onto a file in that saves folder which will be generated. To back them up, I'm not going to do a tutorial today. I'm going to do it another day, but again, it, all you have to do is turn on that emulation and you'll have memory card emulation for the GameCube. You still need a controller though. So, yeah. That's pretty much going to do it for the video. Any questions, leave it down below. I'll try to answer it. Some of your questions are really confusing. Um, I'd say for the USB, if it's just not working, try a different USB drive. Again, Lexar works fine. Kingston works fine. Those are the two that I have the best luck with is Lexar and Kingston. So, that's pretty much going to do it for the video. Um, yeah, and I'm going to see you on the next one. Peace out. Love y'all.